Hey, this is YBR with BMG Drive, and today we have a really interesting vehicle to look at, and I really don't even know how to describe it without first showing it to you. The vehicle we're going to be looking at today is the PLE ATTE, and there's three versions of it, so we're going to start off with the standard version right now, and we'll look at the other versions later on. So here's your first look at the vehicle itself. It's just this absolutely massive 8x8 futuristic looking vehicle, and that's honestly the best I can do for describing how it looks. You just kind of got to see it to get an idea of what it looks like. It's definitely something different. It's not a normal car at all. It's just this crazy looking thing. And it's called the PLE ATTE because it's, inspi it's inspired by the ATTE from Star Wars. And you wouldn't believe how badly I wanted to say Star Trek throughout this whole video just to make people really uh, annoyed and mad. But I decided, you know what? Let's stay honest with things and say what it really is. So. It's inspired by the ATTE from Star Wars, which is a walking vehicle. But as you see, this is not a walking vehicle. It has wheels. So it's basically a reimagining of that vehicle saying, what if instead of having feet, it had wheels? Now right here, I want you to watch this middle section right here. This is really cool. That middle section is like an articulated bus or whatever you call it where you're at. Like that, articulated buses have so many names. You can call it like a bendy bus, tandem bus, stretch bus, double bus, banana bus, slinky bus. Wiggle bus, caterpillar bus, accordion bus, probably some more bus stuff. But point is, that section right there is really cool because it's like what they have on the articulated buses where it allows the two sections to move somewhat independently of each other. So when we're going over bumps and stuff, you'll notice they're stretching between the two when you go over it. And it's just one of those things I never saw before. And it's just mesmerizing to watch as you're going over bumps like this. It's just so cool to be able to see that. And... I don't know if I'll ever get bored of that, to be honest. It's just like, it's just, I didn't know you could do something like that in Demon G Drive. But you can, apparently, and it's awesome. So, hypothetically, if you wanted to make an articulated bus, you can. Uh, anyways, though, back to the vehicle itself and its history. This was originally a Rigs of Rods vehicle, so you might recognize it from that, and it was ported over to Demon G Drive by the same author who made it for Rigs of Rods. And it does have functional lights and stuff, so brake lights, for example, you can see them right there. It has headlights as well. Lots of lights, actually. It lights up on the back and stuff, even. If you look close enough, you'll see that these lights, like right around there, light up. It's just a nice little detail. And the light headlights are fully functional. Brake lights are fully functional. And it even has signals for when you want to change lanes. Although, I'm guessing you don't need to use one of those. When you want to change lanes with this, people will respect you. Or else they'll die. Because this thing weighs, oh, like 25 metric tons rounding down a little bit. 25 metric tons. That's a lot of weight. That's ridiculous. This whole vehicle is ridiculous though in the best way possible. And one thing that's surprising about it, even though it's just this absolutely massive crazy vehicle, it's really good on your frame rate, believe it or not. Like if you can run a normal vehicle, you can probably run this vehicle because most of the details for this vehicle come from the textures. The model itself and the j structure, it's really quite simple. But the textures make it look a lot more complicated. And that really is what allows this vehicle to run so well. Like I said, if you can run a normal vehicle, you can probably run this massive behemoth vehicle. And I didn't expect that. When I saw this thing, I was just thinking, oh, that thing is going to lag so bad. But honestly, I'm getting like 55, 60 frames per second, which is about what I normally get with a normal vehicle. Like compared to the T-Series, the T-Series gets me, oh, I don't know, like... 30 frames per second so it's significantly less laggy than the t-series by comparison and that's great because i i like vehicles that are able to look good and run well that's that's something that's really nice to have that means anybody can use this thing unless you have like a laptop from 2002 that can't even run the game in the first place well then you're screwed otherwise you can run this thing and drive it all over the place like i'm doing right now so right now, though, we've just been using the normal version, but there are two more I could uh, go ahead and look at. One of them I probably won't do much driving with, because all it does is it makes the articulating part right here a solid object instead of having the bendiness to it. And I like having the bendiness to it. It's fun that way. Like, going over these rocks, here's a really good spot to, like, oh, get stuck on a tree. This tree is too low. Now, this vehicle's too massive. That's the actual problem. Okay, go a little bit around the tree, but as I was saying, you could really, again, see... The articulation in action. By the way, this thing is a pretty good off-roader. I will say that now. This is a good off-roader because it's just 
eight wheels, all with power, and a lot of power. This thing has like 2,000 horsepower, and I'm not even joking. Look, here we go. 2,000 ish horsepower. 1,925 is about where it's peaked out. It peaks out, it looks like. That's a lot of horsepower. And then the torque is another story. The torque on this thing is over 600 Newton meters. And I, I don't know the exact conversion rate to foot pounds for that, and I can't remember if there's a way to switch what it says, but that's a ton of torque, trust me. That is massive torque. Anyways, let's uh, let's do some more driving with this, and uh, maybe we can look at the other version. The other version, the one I'm actually going to look at, all it does is gives you rear steering as well, so then you have the front and rear wheels to steer you around places, and that actually is really useful for when you're doing off-roading stuff. But right now, I'm just jumping around and showing you how this suspension is able to just dominate whatever it goes at. Like, there's like a something that would normally bottom out a car. Not an issue. Like this cube right here. A little bit of an issue. Oh, my whole wheel just exploded. Well, that's okay. Got more wheels where that came from. Oh, that did more than just break the wheel. That broke the whole drive line and stuff. Okay. Well then, I guess I'll reset you. I think instead of just destroying the ATTE, I should now give it a chance to destroy something on its own because this vehicle is also really good at destroying things. So for example, I'm going to take this truck and I'm just going to park it somewhere around here. And then we could just take the ATTE to that thing and run right over it. it. That truck compared to the cube is nothing. The cube got a lucky hit on me. The truck, he can't do that. We could just run right over him, do a little bit of slow-mo. Right over that truck. All four wheels on this side will run over the truck. Maybe even some on the other side, depending on how it bounces. Or maybe they'll just get stuck under here. Or we'll hit a jump, and I don't know what's going to happen at this point, honestly. Run it over like that, too. That's interesting. I managed to run it over with both sides of the, the vehicle. But anyways, that's what it did to the truck. Interestingly enough, I think this truck would still drive. It's just upside down. Hey, you can fix that, right? Oh, yes, I can. And I don't mean the fact that the truck flipped over. I mean the fact that it still drives. Although, when you crash a vehicle, it actually makes it where it can still drive for quite a long time, usually. Because it doesn't usually damage the important bits. Except, I, just in case, you know what? Just, just in case it can still drive, let's go ahead and back up on it. Oh, it's stuck now. How dare you get stuck? I'll back up more. Then I'll go forward. I'll just keep running you over so much. All right, let's see if that uh, finally killed the truck. Truck's like, no, nah, I'm good. The truck just, <laughs> it don't even look like a truck. It don't even look like a car. But it's like, oh, I can still drive, sort of. That wheel's uh, non-existent. But I got one wheel in the back, that's all I need. I don't know how that thing is driving. Honestly, I have no idea. But they I'm not even a I'm not even mad. Like the ATTE did a great job destroying it. And I want to go ahead and uh switch over to the one with the um front and rear steering, which is called the heavy terrain version. Which is like the even more off-roady version. But right there you can see the all-wheel steering going right there in action. And that actually gives you a much better turning radius, so you can just see nice tight maneuver that I could run over the truck again <laughs> no, I just like running that truck over I need a new truck something bigger that's what I need to do let's uh let's do this let's try to try to run over a plane that's gonna be interesting another thing I should mention is this vehicle actually oh just crashed a little oh no it's stuck in the wing that's not what the goal was oh I made a mistake what I was saying though is this vehicle has a turbo button and it allows the vehicle to go over 700 miles per hour which is the highest speed I've ever seen for a wheeled vehicle in BMG Drive. The only thing that goes faster is something that flies like the OVO 11 or something that's a plane that's falling in sun gravity. That's about the only things I could think of that's really faster than this thing than the turbo mode. And right now we're hitting the plane, just broke him in half and shoved him out the way. He's a little too tall to actually run over because we're about at the same height. But I could pretty much just shove this plane along without any concern, especially if I use manual mode. Manual is a little bit better for this vehicle, I've noticed, because under some circumstances, the automatic it doesn't shift exactly. Like when I was ramming the plane, it was in third. If I put it in the first, I can really shove that plane out the way. 
Now, I don't know if this will make a difference for sure, but I wonder. If we have the landing gears closed and put the plane lower to the ground, can we actually crush it? That's what I want to find out. Another thing I should mention is I think it's also faster in manual. Uh, just driving it, it feels a lot faster in manual because I always shift it like as high as the tachometer will go. So it makes it definitely feel faster. And I know I missed the plane. Don't worry, that was intentional. I wanted to come at, from, come at it from this angle because I think it would be a little bit uh, better for crashing into it. And even though I just crashed right there into that that block, I didn't get any serious damage. Like, I figured that was going to ruin something, but not with the ATTE. He is totally fine. All right, so we'll do a little bit of slow-mo on this. Come on, climb on that plane. Yeah, get on it. Well, ah, the plane's slippery. That's the problem. Get on the plane. Not quite. Not happening. Oh, he's stuck even. Well, he's not stuck, but he just can't move forward. I'm pretty sure I could reverse right out of it. Yeah. Come on, climb this plane. Camera. Cr crazy camera. Yeah, it's just a little too tall for the wheels. You need, like, bigger tires than those ones to be able to do that. How about this? What if we tried to make this thing face off against the, uh, the uh, MAZ or MAZ or whatever you call it? You know, you, I've heard people say it's both ways. So I'm just like, you know what? I'll say both names. How's that? Because this is also an eight-wheeled vehicle. It also weighs a lot. 23 metric tons, rounding up a little bit. So it's not that big of a weight difference. I am pretty sure the ATTE is going to win, though. That's why I am going to be the ATTE. Because I want to be a winner, not a loser. It also so Because it has like a weight, speed, and size advantage. So I don't see it losing. Like, it's one of those things where how could it? I mean, it's one of those things where they could actually both lose. But I'm hoping I can win. When you put them side by side like that, or crashing into each other, or whatever you want to call it, you can see just how much bigger this thing is. This thing is crazy big. Like, compared to a normal vehicle, the MAZ is big. And you got this, and it's like, well, sh MAZ is tiny. And after that crash, I I'm shoving him along. I'm pretty sure I win that fight. I mean, if you look at my vehicle, like, my front suspension's been pushed in a little bit. But all eight wheels still make contact to the ground. MAZ, uh, <laughs> yeah. He can't, he can't even move really good. Me, I can still move great. In fact, the AI was charging at the poor MAZ for round two. You lost in your face. Oh man, the MAZ is getting a little glitched out. Let's stop doing that. All right, AI, you need, to, you can calm down. You don't need to hurt nobody. Why is it still revving it up? Just reset it then. There we go. How about this? Can it stand a cannonball? That's the next test I want to do, so let's grab the cannonball. And I'm just going to teleport it into position near the ATTE. And I know I just abbreviated it as the ATTE. It's just easier that way instead of saying PLE ATTE. It's not an official abbreviation for the vehicle by any means. Uh, it's just easier on me instead of like spending so much time to say the name. Anyways, here is a cannonball. Line it up, raise it a little bit. There we are. Parking brake on. Shoot! Ha! <laughs> it just bounces off. It's like, what is that? You call that an attack? This thing is from Star Wars. They use lasers because cannonballs are, I don't know. They don't use cannonballs, is all I'm saying, man. A little bit up. There we are. Hey, we got a little dent. That's all the cannonball did. Hey, oh, I got hit. It's nothing. Uh, another thing I should mention, I don't think I mentioned this, it does have an interior. And it doesn't have any gauges or anything like that. So there's actually two interior cameras you can have a choice from. So you just hit the next camera and you notice this one's a different camera. It's the same camera, but this one has the gauges on. So that way, if you want to have the gauges, you just do that and it works out fine. Uh, well enough for uh, driving it around. But I, I do want to mention though it has no gauges, although the steering wheels, steers and all that good stuff. Man, you don't got much leg room in this thing though. YBR, worrying about the important things, you know? Man, this don't got enough leg room. B plus. Can you go up this ramp? Oh, this is gonna be tough. Oh, I hit the blocks in the air. This thing is so tall, it, it got caught on those blocks and then well, everything went bad from there. I think if we were really careful, we might have been able to avoid that, but I didn't see it coming. I was just like, oh, we hit the blocks. Okay, then. 
Oh man, I just ate the cannon alive. Sorry, cannon. Didn't mean to do that. It just happens. Alright, cannon, here's your chance. Shoot that guy! It's like nothing. Uh, anyways, though, the next thing I want to do is just show off that top speed I was talking about earlier. And we could do that here if I uh, go to the edge of the map and then drive from there. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks weird out here, doesn't it? Anyways, the turbo is used by holding down the T key like a lot of modded vehicles have. And here we go. Turbo on. We're just going to shift all the way into first. I'm not even going to bother accelerating. We're just going to let the turbos do the job. And I believe that speedometer might be an airspeed speedometer. I'm not sure. I want to say it is, but I'm not 100% on that. Anyways, we're at 300 miles per hour and we're just getting started. You notice it just keeps going. Like 350 and there's no signs of slowing down. Just 400. Keep going. Keep going. 450 now. And then like... It's insane fast. Obviously, it's hard to really get a perspective of how fast this thing's going because there's literally nothing around it at this point in time because it's gone so fast and so far. But yeah, 650 now. I never mentioned anything about the sounds. It's one of those things where I always forget it because it's like you can hear the sounds, can't you? Why do I mention them? And at about 7 miles per hour, it gets a little unstable. As you see, we're kind of jiggling about. I can keep it going straight and... We can even hit 800 miles per hour. It's one of those things I've never actually saw. How fast can it go? All I know is it can go fast. Like 850 now. 870. 880. 890. 900. Let's go for 1,000 and then we'll call it quits. Oh no, the tires have shredded. The tires have shredded. Oh, we're done. Basically, 900 is about the limit. Those tires look cool when they shred. They look like saw blades. I never noticed that. When you ruin the tires on this, they end up looking like saw blades. I wonder if you can still drive with it like that. Let me uh, make it come to a stop slowly because I have no option here on how fast it comes to a stop. Once it comes to a stop, I want to try to drive it in saw blade mode. Oh, this is going to take a while. <laughs> the brakes don't have much uh, grip here, you know? Here, I'll just... Uh, I'll just be right back once it finally comes to a stop because this is going to take a long time. Eventually, saw blades came to a stop. I don't know exactly when because I decided to leave while it slowed down. But it did stop and now we can see how well it handles in saw blade mode, which doesn't seem to be very well because as you would, uh, as you would guess, we have little to no traction, which means we just slide all over the place, which is actually kind of fun. It's like you got a really good drift vehicle right here. I mean, look at this angle we're going at. With the four-wheel steering, I don't know if that I would make it much better or worse, but that is like a perfect drift right here until we hit the the mountain and started climbing it accidentally. It is drivable like this, surprisingly enough. I didn't think you'd be able to drive it, but you can. Oh, the stopping is where it's a problem. It don't stop. It just it just slides along when you have it in saw blade mode. All right, I think that's enough of that. Um, the next thing I want to do is do some off-roading, like some more serious off-roading with this thing. So let's go ahead and switch maps and let's head to uh, off-road crawl. Now I should warn you, there are some missing textures on this course and I fixed them before, but then the update made it where that fix didn't work and I tried to do it again and it no longer was the correct fix. So I gotta find a new fix for this and I'll probably look into that soon because I keep forgetting to and it's one of those things where it should be pretty easy. I just have to do some research and testing to figure out exactly what the fix would be. But until then, we have to drive on somewhere that looks, well, very unusual. I don't know how to even describe this. It's very strange. Like maybe a volcano erupted and just spewed lava everywhere and this is the dry lava, except it kicks up dust. So I don't know. I'm trying to make it sound logical, but there really is no way. It's just a glitch. Um, but anyways, right now I'm driving to this course over here because this is a nice wide course, which we need because this ATTE is so big, we need to make sure it, can, it doesn't get stuck on the edges of the course. Now for a normal vehicle, this is a really difficult course. For this, not so much. Hardest part about driving this on this course is just making sure you stay on the course and you don't accidentally uh, go too fast and fly off of it. Otherwise, it is really easy to go through a course like this. So like right here, this turn, that's the hardest part, to make sure you go around a corner without crashing. Otherwise, 
There's nothing that'll really stop you here. Like, you can just go over all of these rocks and everything, and it's nothing. Compared to a normal vehicle, it is flying through the course. The hard part is just making sure you can maneuver around the corners, and that was not some good maneuvering at all. I'm kind of a little stuck here because of the corner. I gotta adjust, adjust. Is my, my wheel stuck on something? I don't know. I'm stuck on something, but I can't tell what. That's annoying. We'll just reverse it and go again. There we go. Now we're good to go again. Just do some amazing off-roading once again. Nothing can stop it. Oh, oh, automatic transmission. You need to go into first gear, man. There we go, first gear and we can get up this thing. Right? Yes. Oh no! Oh no, it's too steep. Here we go. Wait for it. Go! Oh man. It's a little stuck here. Really, we lost all momentum because of the stupid automatic transmission. That messed everything up. Yeah, I mean, why would you ever use an automatic transmission off-roading? Because this thing is good enough where you can actually get pretty far just using an automatic. That's why. So if we get our momentum back, we should be able to go over that. There we go. And this is the hard part, because I don't know if it'll really fit through here easily. So I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, stop off-roading now. Let's uh, let's head back to grid map, actually, because I didn't do that many crashes into like, walls and stuff. I was too busy crushing the truck to do any actual crashes for the vehicle itself. So let's go there and do that. So let's go ahead and grab the ATTE, and we can use the uh, fixed version for a little bit so you can see what that one looks like. And you'll notice that middle part does not bend at all, which I don't like. I love the bendy part. That is like one of the coolest parts to me. And if you get rid of it, it makes me sad. I don't know why you would not want the bendy part. There might be some actual really good reasons not to use it, but you know what? I love the bendy part, and I would never normally use this one. The bendy part's just too cool. So here's a quick crash with it, and it's really hard to judge how the crashes are, because how would something like this crash? Nobody knows, because it's a uh, mythical vehicle that doesn't actually exist. So you can crash all you want, but it's really hard to say if that's a good crash, or if the physics are good or not. But here's a quick example of some actual crashes. And you can see how it does. Interior-wise, interior gets real busted up. I did show the interior, right? At least a little bit. Pretty sure I did. We can just go ahead and go back at it. And I am using the turbo to make it a little bit faster of a crash. Like, boom. And now we only have six wheels on the ground. Still drivable, though. It's not as easy. See, that thing is, is, it is really durable, man. It's a great vehicle. This would be the best destruction derby car I have ever driven, I'm pretty sure. Except for maybe like a plane so you could just fly away. But if you actually wanted to do a destruction derby... This is probably the one to use. Like, that's what it takes to kill it, basically. A uh, collision into a wall at a very high speed. Uh, but that's using the solid one. I want to go ahead and use the bendy one. I don't think it actually makes too much of a significant difference on the crashes. But I just, I love the bendy. The bendy is so cool. Why would you not use the bendy section? And uh, here we go. We're going to make this first crash at least 50 miles per hour. Just like the other one. Well, maybe not just like similar to the other one. You know, the bendy actually might help to uh, reduce the actual damage to the vehicle. I don't know. Because it can compress and then decompress? Or did it not really decompress there? I don't know. Just a random thought I was having. I never actually did any testing between the two to determine if one was better than the other at ramming things head on. Because any normal vehicle, this thing would just destroy. Seems like there's not much difference. Although the bendy section is totally gone now. That's actually a difference. I, I take that back. There is a difference in the bendy section itself. I was looking only at the front initially. Um, so that's interesting. Lots of speed. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Right. Time to go to a different map and finish things up. And we're going to do what's traditional. So we're going to go to Cliff. And then Leap of Death, and then, uh, what's it called? Uh, Brutal Slope. Alright. Let's see. We'll, uh, use the standard one here. And I could probably drive down this thing really easily. 
But that's not the point right now. The point is to crash down it and see what kind of damage it sustains. So that's what we're going to do. I wouldn't be surprised though if at the end of this it still drives. Just being so big and massive and, rel and uh, really durable. It might. Yeah, one tire is broken. So what? We got uh, seven more. Bouncing all over the place and how are you doing car? Well, you're not a car are you? You're more like a, t a wheeled tank than a car. If you weren't upside down, I bet you could drive. Like that, there. Drive, 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 drive. Nope, I'm, ups I'm upside down again. Right side up. Yeah, alright, can you drive after that? Yes, you can. Not very fast, but it can drive. Pretty impressive. I wonder if it could drive on under the water. Or if it actually drowns. Like some vehicles drown, some don't. It just depends on if they're configured to. And I didn't check it, so we're gonna check. Can you drown? Nope. It's just like, I don't care, I can't drown. And there is a possible uh, excuse for the, for the uh, fact that it can't drown. You could say it's using some high-tech Star Wars engine that uh, is able to go totally underwater without an issue. I did uh, manage to just shred the tires doing that though. I'm not exactly sure how that happened. Uh, oh wait, no it didn't. It looked like the tires were in saw blade mode temporarily, but they weren't. How weird. I can't be the only one who saw that, right? Anyways, we can go ahead and drop it from the top of the cliff again. At a different angle, and then we can make our way to Leap of Death so it actually has a challenge. I mean, I know it did kind of not drive well after this one, so it is a challenge. But Leap of Death is a whole nother level. I love how it wags around as it falls. Like, it is just such a neat vehicle, man. This thing is cool. And it's stopping. Yeah, it stopped. So let's go ahead and change levels and head on over to Leap of Death. Where are you? Uh, there you are. That took a really long time to load. Like, it's a good thing I added out loading because otherwise, ugh. I would have ran out of things to say. That took like a minute and a half to load for some reason. Anyways, let's uh, let's take this thing down the ramp and we're gonna do this really sloppily so we can do like a flip and a roll and all kinds of stuff. Makes it a lot more interesting I think when you're like tumbling like this because you never know it, where exactly it's gonna hit until you get really close to the ground and it actually does hit. Like that. And front got all the impact. The back's like, I'm fine. Well, not fine anymore, but he was pretty fine. And now we just keep tumbling all the way down. Seems like it held up uh, relatively realistically, no major glitchiness or anything yet. I'm not saying there won't be because I see something that might be, but for the most part it did pretty well. Like when you have a vehicle that's so different, it's always hard to, hard to know if it'll actually hold up well or not. You know, just being 25 tons is gonna be something to look at. But it did well there. I think we can go ahead and put it to the top. And go again, but this time we're going to turbo off of it, so we're going really, really fast. So there we go, and I'm still turboing because we can. And now we're going to really hit hard on that first one. Or we might just hit the water for all I know. Because we are going over 220 miles per hour, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's a, a wind speed speedometer. Which is, it includes like the downward speed. So we're actually having an impact speed of 370 miles per hour or so. Oh, that one was a little too hard. I mean, 300 miles per hour, that's a crazy impact. So that one was enough to get some glitchiness in it. So this one we'll do at a normal speed then. So reset. And here we go. By the way, I'm not gonna try to do the road. That's that's impossible. Like, this thing is way too massive to try to drive on that road. We would just fall all over the place. Some sections you probably could do, yes. But not the whole thing, no way. Not me, at least. That's for sure. Maybe some other driver could. Ah, uh, there's some glitchiness again. Oh well. Seems alright. Like, everything gets a little glitchy, it seems like, on Leap of Death, so... It's probably about average, I would say, in terms of, uh... Likelihood to get glitchy here. And that's good. Like, when I say average, I mean comparing to stock vehicles. Anyways, we're not gonna get much more interesting things happening here when it's this damage, so I'm gonna go ahead and say... 
let's go to the next map, which is, oh goodness, that's not the change map button. What am I doing? Change level. We want to go to, which one is it? Uh, brutal Slope, it's already highlighted. You know the procedure. We need to get the vehicle, and hopefully the flexible is stable enough. Well, the vehicle is stable up to 700 miles per hour. It should be fine. And we can do a couple of runs. Some of them we can use turbo. Other ones we can uh, just use the engine plus gravity. I think that'll be the most fun way to do things. So I'm gonna wait for it to get over the bump. Go, go, go. That was amazing. I thought I was gonna die for sure. But I managed to make it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit the convertibilizer, as I call it. And see what a convertible one of these would look like, or if it, leave, if it will even actually fit through that. That might be a little difficult for it, to be honest. Let's find out. Oh, it wouldn't fit! I've never actually seen that before, honestly. Everything has always fit, but not that. It just got destroyed. Maybe we need turbo and we need to go faster. Told you we'd be doing some, uh, multiple ones and with turbo. Here's the first one with the turbo. Slow it down. And... Go! Max speed, max speed! This one better be convertibilized. It's not even gonna look like a convertible, it's just gonna be ruined. But I don't care, I just want it to have... Uh, have the ability to fit through here. So... Fits! Yes, it fits! It's also completely ruined, but I got it to fit. It's all that mattered to me. It's like, it fit, that's good. Anyways, back down the hill for the last one, maybe. I don't know if I'll bother doing a uh, high speed run or not for the brick wall. It depends how this first one turns out, really. First thing I gotta do is line it up. We are way crooked. I think that's gonna make it eventually. Mm, yeah, yeah, we're good. I might overshoot it actually. I gotta go left now. Go left, go left. All right, perfectly centered. At least really close to perfectly centered, maybe a little off. After a crash like that, I'm thinking that's a good ending. Spiked up though, that's funny looking. It looks like a, uh, one of those old, uh, old, old NASCAR uh, inspire what are they called? Not NASCAR. The muscle cars they made basically for NASCAR though. Like the uh, Superbird and stuff where it just has a ridiculous wing on it. That's what it makes me think of. Anyways, until next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya.